I want to propose something to you all today. Uh, I want to propose that you resolve something very powerful to love who you are right now. And of course, I think that wanting to be your best self and setting goals and intentions is really major. Take a moment to look at what is really running through your mind about yourself that may be holding you back. The energy of the universe responds to positivity. And so if you're telling yourself you're not slim enough, you're not good enough, when that negative chatter starts in your head, stops, lean away from it. When you let those thoughts of not being enough seep in, you can't really act out the best of yourself. So your actions must be in alignment with all the goodness and strengths that you know to be true about yourself. Life is like a wave and you ride it through the ups and downs, the steady times, and then you anchor yourself in the storms. A mistake is a life experience designed to move you in a different direction. And a mistake might be more important to your supreme destiny than even a triumph. Know that your life is way bigger than any one experience. So when those mistakes happen, you use them to guide you to the next right move. What mistake or mistakes have you made in your life that you need to, number one, forgive yourself for? And what mistakes turned out to be blessings in disguise? It's all about progress, not about perfection, because nobody's perfect. It's about progress. I believe that when you're fully present, that's when you're actually fully alive. You're clearer, you're more calm, you're not distracted and able to experience all the nuance and wonder of a life more awakened. So when we can just tune into what's just in front of us, life becomes simpler and less crowded with the to-dos, the what-ifs and the why-nots. And when you need to focus on what to do or what to do next, the focus is just that. So deeper human connection comes from that way of operating in the world. And the now becomes your everything. Now, this is what I know, that it's one of the most impactful spiritual practices, knowing the power of now. Because the only moment we all have, you have, I have, is now. Past, already gone. The future, not even your next breath, guaranteed. Letting go of energy that's clouding your vision and holding you back. It's a life practice that I learned long ago that has freed me whew, so many ways. It's a fact that holding grudges against somebody who's done you wrong or replaying, revisiting hurtful situations in your head over and over only weighs you down and prevents you from being who you're meant to be right now because you're still energetically holding on to the past. The energy that you put into constantly rewinding to the resentment. Why did they do that? Why did they say that to me? I didn't deserve to be treated that way. All of that only keeps you stuck. It will never change what happened. You gotta press stop and reject the urge to keep replaying so that you can then fast forward into the now for yourself. You know, a lot of people think that holding on to things that disempowered them is gonna somehow magically turn it around. Uh -uh. You have to release the notion, give up the hope that the past could have been any different. And you also must release the idea that people would do what you might do in any given instance. This is a big one. I had to learn and relearn before I actually got it. Expecting people to do what you would do in a situation only leads to your disappointment. Not theirs, they're going on with their life. So let people be who they are and either you accept it or you don't. Not doing that keeps you stuck in a circumstance that actually costs you time, costs you energy. And I can guarantee that oftentimes the person on the other side of the bitterness you're holding on to, they're not even thinking about you. In fact, they probably have just moved on. They certainly aren't obsessing the way you are. Think of it like letting go of any bad habit that just doesn't serve your well-being. Not an easy task. Taking the road to a more enlightened, healthy existence never is. So this is what I want to ask you to ask yourself. Why am I holding on to this? How is this serving me? And really think about the answer. Maybe it makes you feel validated. Maybe it makes you feel righteous 
or maybe taking on the pain is your way of recognizing the injustice so that even though it won't be made right, it can at least not be forgotten. It's very difficult for me to even see myself as successful because I still see myself as in the process of becoming successful. To me, successful is getting to the point where you are absolutely comfortable with yourself. And it does not matter how many things you have acquired. Uh, the ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. It's the same thing that prevents you from being abused as a child, that prevents you from being abused as an adult, that allows you to build success for yourself. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. You are worthy to say no. You're worth that it's okay if you say no. It's okay if you say no and then people don't like you. That's really okay. The important thing is how you feel about what you're doing, how you feel about yourself. It's a long struggle though. It's a long struggle. And I'm just hoping that, you know, in the work that I do on the show and the speaking that I do around the country and that young people who are watching this can get the lesson sooner than I did. Because it's painful, because you keep repeating it over and over and over until you get it right. And what I found is that every time you have to repeat the lesson, it gets worse. Because it's, you know, it's, I, I call it God trying to get your attention, the universe trying to get your attention. So we didn't get your attention the first time, so we're going to have to hit you a little harder this time. So I'm still doing it. I'm still learning. Turn your wounds into wisdom. You will be wounded many times in your life. You'll make mistakes. Some people will call them failures. But I have learned that failure is really God's way of saying, excuse me, you're moving in the wrong direction. What is the truest, highest vision that you hold for yourself? No matter where you are in your life, there's always the next level. There's always the next level to the last breath. So I feel that I always knew that I would get be done with the show when I felt like, oh, I've said as much as I could say here on this See? platform. So I feel that until you have used your value as a human being, you're not done. I teach them that there is no light without cultivating a spiritual life because you are first and foremost a spiritual being having a human experience. And if you lose sight of that, it's easy to get lost in the world and no one can save a world that they're lost in when they've lost sight of their own North Star. So having a spiritual life actually means actively and ritually creating the space in your life all the time for gratitude, for kindness, for empathy, for inspiration, for joy, and for reverence for life in the home of your soul first. And then working to spread that inner joy outward. It means slowing down. It means taking in the moment. It means being exactly where you are, not distracted somewhere else. It means knowing who you are and getting about the business of fulfilling why you really came to our planet. It is your job to make yourself whole. Not perfect, but whole and full. Your real work in life, your real work, is to fill yourself till your cup runneth over so that you're never grasping and needy, clamoring and insecure. When you're saying, I know who I am, and I'm telling you, it's the thread that runs through everything. It's the thing that allows you to stand in your own truth. And one of the things for years that Maya Angelou used to say to me, is baby, you need to know that you alone are enough. You alone are enough. What I know for sure is that in this world, time is a moving on and it's our most valuable commodity. You can never get it back. So staying in that loop, playing it over and over in your head of hurt only amplifies your pain. Let it go. Exhale, make room in your heart for something that is uplifting. Surround yourself with people who want the best for you. You have the ability to shift the DNA of your spirit and control how you perceive life. So why not lighten your load and let it go? Living integrity means living in a way that honors your truest self. It's doing the thing that you know you're supposed to do. 
My friend Martha Beck says that deep down, we all know what makes us happy and how to create your best possible life. And that knowledge is actually coded into your very nature. But I also know how challenging it can be to listen and trust your own inner voice, especially when you feel the pressures of what everybody else thinks you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to get married. You're supposed to stay married. You're supposed to have a baby. You're supposed to have a picture-perfect home. But here's something that I'm hoping you all will realize for yourself. Sometimes it takes doing the things that people or society say you're not supposed to be doing to find out what is true for you. What is What are you really supposed to be doing? For example, at the very beginning of my career, some of you have heard this story, I worked as a news anchor and reporter in Baltimore. It taught me a lot about life. And during that time, I, I knew I wasn't being my authentic self. I didn't like doing the news. I, I just didn't like it. But the voice of my father, who thought he knew what I was supposed to do, and even my own voice saying, wow, this is an important job. My father was saying, don't you give up that job, girl. You're making $25,000. You're never going to make that in one year. So eventually, my bosses let their feelings be known. They took me off the news and put me on this local talk show called People Are Talking. And when that decision was made at first, I thought it was a demotion. But after one day on that talk show, I felt so energized and so fueled, I knew that I had come home to myself. And that's what living integrity, even in your work, feels like. So trust me when I say that only you know what that feels like for you. And with that in mind, I want us to be more in alignment with the truth for ourselves this week. Who you're meant to be, who you are right now. What have you been waiting and wanting to do? All those insights should fuel your decisions about how you move through the world right now. Pay attention to what makes you feel lit up from the inside. Examine any moments when your 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 head saying one thing and your spirit is saying another. And everybody has a different talent. And the reason we're all so messed up is because you're looking at everybody else's talent. Yeah. And wishing you had some of their talent. All the energy that you spend thinking about, wishing about, being jealous of, envious of anybody else is energy that you're not only putting out, it's gonna come back to you negatively, but you're taking that away from you. All your energy should be forced on, what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? How can I be used in service? Because Dr. King's message of not everybody can be famous, but everybody can be great because greatness is determined by service. And there is not a job in here that you can do that you don't switch the paradigm to service and not make that job more fulfilling. I don't care what the job is. If you say, if I look at this from, how do I use this in service to something bigger than myself? It no longer becomes a job. It becomes an offering to the world. There is not one thing that has ever happened to you. Not one experience, not one encounter, not one crisis, not one joyful thing that hasn't happened just to make you better and help you rise. Every single thing you're calling in, whether you know it or not, when you figure out that you are calling it in, you actually start meditating or praying or doing or having a spiritual practice, which is the number one thing you need if you want to be successful in the world. You need something that gives back and nourishes you, regardless of what you call that. You need to, you need to fill your cup so that you can be so full, your cup runneth over and you have enough to give to other people. If you don't fill your cup, you end up dried up. You end up tired, exhausted, and don't have enough to give to other people. You end up resentful every time somebody asks you because your cup is empty and now they want some of yours. So your number one job, your number one job is to fill your cup and make yourself whole. That's your job. And I am now at this stage of my career thinking about how to do that more poignantly and fruitfully. I'm now looking for ways that I can do that to uh, create a level of sustainability in within our communities that will go long beyond you know my lifetime. Everything you even try to do to me 
is already done to you. That is not just a, a rhetorical saying, that is law. That is Newton's third law of motion in physics, which says everything that goes out is coming back. It's just like everything that goes up is coming down, may take a long time to come down, is coming down. Everything that goes out is coming back, it's coming back. So to answer the power of manifestation and meditation, what meditation does is sync you up with the source. What meditation does is allows you to literally tap into the power that created you so that you are in alignment with that. And so when you carry that out into the world, everything that you do comes from the center of that alignment that's coming from the source that we call God, we call divine energy, divine intelligence, whatever name you want to give it to, we call life. When you are synced up with life, life just gives to you. Wherever you are in your life, in your relationships, every person that you encounter, every experience, the person wants to know, was that okay? Was that okay? And what I started to hear was that what people are really saying is, did you hear me? Did you hear me? And did what I say mean anything to you? And so I started to listen with that in mind, with that intention of validating that you're being here, you're speaking to me, you're taking the time to do this with me is important because you matter. And that's true for everybody who's watching or listening that every argument that you ever have, every encounter, the person just wants to know, did you hear me? Did you see me? And did I say anything to have you? You will find true success and happiness if you have only one goal. There really is only one, and that is this, to fulfill the highest, most truthful expression of yourself as a human being. You wanna max out your humanity by using your energy to lift yourself up, your family, and the people around you. Theologian Howard Thurman said it best. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Do you believe that you are worthy of happiness? Do you believe that happiness, success, abundance, comfort, fulfillment, peace, joy, love is a part of your birthright? Is that what you believe? Or do you believe something else? Because you will manifest the life that you believe. I've always known that no matter what my belief is, I'm going to be all right. Empowerment is authority. It is a sign permission slip to actually seize the day. It's the process of getting stronger and more confident and more engaged. And to be empowered is to move through the world without any kind of fear or any kind of apology. And with these gifts comes an even deeper privilege, I believe, and that is the ability to take charge of your own life, to own yourself and claim your rights. And here's what I know for sure, that to whom much is given, much is expected. And I have been given so much. I've earned it, I've been blessed with it, but I've been given a lot. And that's why I've chosen to use my life to lift other people up. Nobody's journey is seamless or smooth. We all stumble, we all have setbacks. If things go wrong, you hit a dead end as you will. It's just life's way of saying, time to change course. So ask every failure, this is what I do. Every failure, every crisis, every difficult time, I say, what is this here to teach me? And as soon as you get the lesson, you get to move on. If you really get the lesson, you pass and you don't have to repeat the class. If you don't get the lesson, it shows up wearing another pair of pants or skirt to give you some remedial work. And what I found is that difficulties come when you don't pay attention to life's whisper, because life always whispers to you first, first, and if you ignore the whisper sooner or later, you'll get a scream. Whatever you resist persists, but if you ask the right question, not why is this happening, but 
what is this here to teach me? What is this here to teach me? It puts you in the place and space to get the lesson you need. I have always known this about celebrity. The real power of being somebody that somebody knows, and I really think that the only difference between being famous and not is that more people know your name. So the only difference between understanding that is understanding that what Selma has done, what Susan has done, what Anna has done, Rebecca has done, what Jim has done, what I've done, you too can do. Because true philanthropy comes from living from the heart of yourself and giving what you have been given. How will you do that? How will you use your personality, the energy of your personality, to serve that which is your soul's calling? I know this for sure. Any life, no matter how fantastic it is, how glorious it seems, how much attention you receive, how much square footage you have, any life and every life is enhanced by the sharing and the giving and the opening up of the heart space. Your life gets better when you can find a way to share it with someone else. So what we've done, you can do. The real empowerment comes when every person leaves this room and makes a decision, makes a decision. Maybe that decision is that you will write a check and support some of the wonderful organizations you've heard here today. But the true decision is, how will you use yourself? How will you use everything that you have been given to serve that which is greater than yourself? How will you use that to become truly, authentically empowered?